All right, let's make a magnetic corner helicopter two by two. First step is obviously disassembly, and this is mostly straightforward, but near the end there are a few tricks. So wings pop out pretty easily for midges. Uh, you can just uh, put your finger in the gap created by removing the wing, separate it, and slide it out. And this works pretty well up until the point where you have most of the puzzle disassembled. So once you get to the end, really with just a couple pairs of midges left, it starts to get a bit tricky. So you'll just have to get creative finding places to grip the puzzle, especially for the last one. There's really not much to hold on to, so that can be pretty tricky. Now that the puzzle is disassembled, I probably should have said this before, but we're gonna be using, I believe, three different types of magnets. It's actually four. We have um, four by two and fifties, five by one and 52, three by 1.5 and 52, and four by one and 52. So each of these are gonna go in different places and I will talk about which one I'm using every time I use them, or if I don't, it'll be on screen or in the description. So the first thing I'm going to do is separate all of the pieces out, and the first pieces I want to work with are the midges. Okay, so now I have the midges, and this is the part that probably has the biggest risk of damaging the puzzle. It's not too bad, but you do have to be careful. The goal is to get these edge caps off, and by prying them off with something like a plastic razor blade, you will most likely cause stress marks, especially on the red and orange pieces where the posts go into the pieces. So we're not going to be able to use this. And I have found that a piece of plastic or something else with a flat surface is ideal. The requirements are that the flat surface has to be at least the thickness of the cap. So you can put the cap on here and the plastic should at least go past, or at least be flush with the cap. It can go past it, but this wall can't be thinner than the cap. Which, I think this is kind of hilarious because this is a Moyu box, and this is a Gan box, and using a Moyu box to remove caps from your corner helicopter 2x2 will damage the caps. You have to get a Gan cube. Or you can also get a clock. This works just the same, but I prefer to use this, uh, the bottom tray from a GAN 14 box. So in order to do this, you just set the piece on top of the box. Uh, the black part does extend down a fraction of a millimeter past the cap. So if you just slide it on this way, it will stop. And then just press down on the top. and the cap pops off. And I'll do the same for the other side. So this is a bit tricky. Sometimes it takes a lot of force. You might occasionally run into one that is stuck. And in that case, you can very gently uh, run a plastic razor blade under it just to separate it from the plastic a little bit at the end. But if you push it in more than maybe half a millimeter or so, it will bend the cap up and create that stress mark. So I'll just demonstrate one more, but then I'm going to do the rest off camera. So put the cap in place, put a finger on top, and push down. If they come off partially like this, just be really careful getting them off. Pull them off at the angle of the pins to avoid bending them. You'll sometimes still get stress marks on the posts, especially the lower one. But as long as it's at least a couple millimeters down from the base, you won't be able to see it through the plastic. So I found this to be pretty reliable. Uh, you might end up with one or two stress marks on the puzzle but it's not nearly as bad as trying to do it any other way that I've tried at least.
So I just took the caps off of this piece and noticed that there's some extra plastic here. It's really thin, but just a mold imperfection. So you can just take a plastic razor blade and scrape it off. Looks like there's a little more closer to the top, but pretty easy fix. All right, so the first pieces we are going to magnetize are these. And they are eventually going to need a total of three magnets, and we have to do them one at a time and let it dry fully or close to fully in between each step. So the first two magnets in these pieces are going to be the 4x1 and 52s. You can also do it with 5x1, but they will uh, that will make the 2x2 two two moves really strong. So I'm going to grab a sticky note, tear off the corner, and mark the end of the stick of magnets just to make sure I always pull from the same side. So it doesn't matter which side you start on, but you're going to magnetize against the flat side of the piece. So I'll start uh, by holding the curve on the left. So for each piece, you're going to remove two magnets from the stick, and then separate them. Put one on the outside of the piece, one inside, and then uh, push them as far in and as far down as they can go. And I usually like to magnetize the pieces in uh, two sets of 12, just to avoid changing what I'm doing too many times. So instead of gluing one piece at a time, I'll just set 12 up like this and glue all of them. So before I glue each piece, I still just make sure the magnet is in the right position by trying to push it back um, more into the piece and then down. So take your glue and just put a little bit in there on the magnet. And then after each piece, I have a sticky note here and I just wipe it on the sticky note to make sure there's no glue on the outside. And if there is, that will wipe it off. You may have to wipe it a few times. Okay, I'm going to be using spare parts for this part of the video just because I don't trust myself enough with the Dremel to do it on video on final parts. But it'll be the same process. So the goal is to remove the bumps on the wings and corners that are used as a clicking mechanism because it'll be replaced by magnets. So we have bumps here, which we're only going to get rid of partially because it is nice to have some amount of that stability left. When the puzzle breaks in, the wings get pretty loose and just having something there will be helpful. And the bumps on the corners are quite a bit smaller, so we're going to remove the whole thing. So I'm going to remove the corner caps just to make it harder to mess something up. Have the Dremel, and I'm going to use it on a pretty low setting. Hopefully you can still hear this, but I'm going to be using the edge here. and just flattening off that surface. You can also use a manual file here, but this is a lot faster. Alright, and as you can see, this surface is flat now. It does typically create a little bit of extra plastic on the sides, and you can just scrape that off with a plastic razor blade. For the edges, the bump is a lot bigger, and we're going to be removing about half of it. So about like that. Okay, I waited overnight for this and this glue is completely dry now. 
This part's kind of fun. You can just kind of go. And then I take the stick of magnets and remove them from the pieces. Okay, and now we're gonna do exactly the same thing we did before, except uh, because this is a two by two, the pairs have to go in opposite directions. So we need to make sure the stick repels the first set of magnets to do the second one. So I have this marker on the end. I'm just gonna remove that one and the one, like one magnet on each side of the marker and move them to the other side. And now I've flipped the polarity of the stick and that repels now. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did before, but with the curve on the right now. Still magnetizing against the flat side. I think this table has magnets under it. But I'm gonna take two off of the stick, put them around the piece, and I'm gonna make 12 of these and then glue them and do it again. Okay, so the first half have magnets now. I'm going to get another post-it note. And just like before, I'm going to push the magnets down and back just to make sure they are in the right position. And then add glue in the space. And then once again, just like before, wipe it to make sure there is no glue on the outside that'll interfere with the cap. This was a pretty bad one, so I'll need a new post-it note already. All right, so now I'm going to magnetize the uh, wings to the corners. To do that, first you have to split the wings, which is surprisingly difficult. The best tool I have found is a screwdriver. So you have the base of the piece here and you just sort of pry them apart like that. And then use a plastic razor blade to go in the gap and twist it to get them apart. All right, so as you can see here, I already magnetized one of these pieces, but the video did not turn out well. So I'm just gonna try again. As you can see, we are using the halves of the wings with the prongs on them. There are also some with holes, but those are going to attach to the midges. So the magnets in these pieces are going to go between the wings and the corners. And another benefit of having part of the bump still intact is that it still fits into the groove on the corners, so you can use it for alignment. In order to position the magnets in the corners, you can just uh, push the midge back as far as it will easily go, and that'll be aligned perfectly. So for these, take a magnet. These are 4x2 N50s, and put it all the way at the back of the piece. Now, without any support, if I touch this at all, it'll just start spinning. So before gluing, I just stick my thumb out a little bit so it has a bit more friction there. So then I take the glue and put it in front of the magnet and then drag the magnet forward on top of the glue. Now, ideally, this is how I would install all of the magnets. It gets glue behind it and on top of it, which gives it a little bit stronger bond. But unfortunately, most of this puzzle's pieces don't have space to do that. So after I have the magnet glued, I'm going to wait 5 or 10 seconds, take it off of the stick, and lay it down. Okay, so now it's time to connect these glued wings with the posts to the corners. And I'll be putting 4x1 and 52s in the corners. So these are not quite dry yet, so I don't get to do the woo, but I'll just do it one at a time. So I will start with this one, 
have a wing in a corner. Take a magnet off the stick and drop it in. Now this is where using too much glue is a problem because the glue can drip down onto the top of this piece and then you won't be able to fit the corners together and you'll have to sand these off on some of the corners if you get too much glue. I found a good way to do this is to uh, misalign them a bit so the wing is higher and then just quickly push it down and that should get the magnet into perfect or near perfect alignment with the one that's already glued. So just going to get a little bit of glue and put it on the top half of the magnet and then when I set it down on the table it will drip down a little bit, hopefully not so much that it blocks the corners from fitting together. All right, it is time for the third and final magnet to go in the midges, and this time we're gonna be using five by one and 52s. But first, I get to do this again. And I'll use the four by one stack to get these magnets off again. So this time the magnets are going to go here, and the curve does have to be on the right in this case. Just because of the way the wings are shaped, you have to magnetize one side to this and the other side to the corners, and you can't really flip it easily. So in order to get polarity for these magnets, it doesn't really matter, but I like to have them attract these ones just because it's not ideal for them to have any interaction, but I would rather it want to be moved inside the piece rather than outside the piece. So it looks like we are going to do it this way. So I'll need a post-it note on this side. All right, and now placing these magnets is pretty tricky as well. I'm going to be using the GAN box again, but this time the uh, MoU one will work as well. So I'm going to get a magnet and put it here and then start pushing it in place. So it's about halfway in now, when I get it a little bit farther. And now I'm going to put it face down, start from here, and slide the piece over. The goal is to get the magnet flush with the piece and as close to this post as possible. You can really use anything for this. I use an edge cap from my spare parts puzzle. If you don't have a spare parts puzzle, I recommend finding something else because it can scratch the cap. But then you're going to just push the magnet down so it's touching the post. Like that. So, kind of hard to see here, but you want it to be flush with the piece and touching the place where these pins go. So the magnets are actually very tight in here, so you don't really need glue, but I like to glue them anyway. But just like before, I'm going to put all of them in and then glue all of them. Okay, so this magnet went down a little farther than I wanted it to. In this case, it's a fraction of a millimeter, so it probably won't impact anything, but I figure it's a good thing to show how to fix it anyway. So I have a thumbtack here, and I'm just gonna get under the magnet push it out, and then I can reattach it to the stick and start over. And while I'm recording, I'll just uh, demonstrate how to glue one of these magnets. It's very similar to the other ones, but you just have to be a bit more careful because there is less space. So just put some on the magnet, and I usually let the glue attach to the post above it, and then just like before, wipe it on the sticky note to make sure there's no extra glue on it. All right, now it's time for the last set of magnets, and that's going to be the midges to the parts of the wings with the holes. So it matters which ones of these are which because um, the space between these two posts is sl only slightly more than three millimeters, so I have to use a three millimeter diameter magnet. And for the uh, wing to corner, magnetization, I wanted to use a four millimeter magnet. 
So before we can magnetize these, we do need to put the caps back on the midges. And that's because we're going to align the magnets by aligning the pieces, and the caps add height to these. So by putting the caps on first, it'll allow you to position them more precisely. So in order to assemble the midges, I like to put pairs of two together, as they will be on the final puzzle. And just treat this as one edge. So, for example, I'll make the white red one. So I put a white cap on one side. That's the wrong cap. It does matter which one is which. And by doing it this way rather than one edge at a time, it just makes it a lot easier to keep track of which ones you have done. So if I didn't pair them like this before putting caps on, I could make two of this one or two of this one or just not enough of either of them. So I will do this for all of them, separate them again, and then come back to magnetize these. Alright, so caps are on all of the midges, and we're going to be using 3 by 1.5 and 52 magnets for this last part. So I'm going to start with a midge and set it like this, a curve facing the right, and the point that goes into the mechanism facing backwards, just because of the position of the magnet. Then I'm going to put a wing next to the midge, disconnect a magnet, and drop it in. Now, unfortunately, this is probably the hardest set of magnets to install consistently. Even though the pieces are flat here, there is still some variance in where the magnet goes. So on the previous ones that I've done, I have just started with one and then eyeballed it to make the rest match. It's not ideal, but there's not a really good reference point inside these pieces to make sure it's perfect. But this one looks about where it should be. So I'm going to glue this one and then use it as the reference point. And then I just hold it upside down for a few seconds to get the glue to move around. And you may have noticed that I was very close to getting glue on the hole here, and you just need to try to avoid that. So that is actually it for magnets, and then I will be back for assembly and setup in a little bit. All right, so magnets are done, but these pieces are not dry yet. So I'm going to demonstrate assembly and setup on this one, which I finished magnetizing a couple days ago. I'm going to start by assembling the corners just to get some of the pieces out of the way. So they can be a bit finicky, especially with only one piece on here. It's not very stable. But once you get the second one in place, it holds together pretty well. Okay, this is the last corner, and if I try to put it together, these two pieces do not fit. And that's because of what I was talking about earlier with using too much glue. You may or may not be able to see, but the glue comes up way too far on this white piece. So to make the pieces fit, I need to sand this bottom right prong on the orange corner. Most of the time I just take a little bit off of the tip, but this is a pretty bad example so it's going to need a lot of material removed. I will try this. Still don't think it's going to be quite enough though. Yeah, almost there, but just needs a little bit more. After corners, I'm going to assemble the wings. So this is a lot easier if I'm more organized, and I guess putting the pieces in a pile like this was kind of a mistake, but it'll still be fine. So I have a red wing with holes, a red wing with pegs, and the same for white. And we can make both red-white wings by matching the pairs. So white with pegs, red with holes, go together. White with holes, red with pegs, go together. 
And I actually forgot to dremel the bumps off of these before starting, but now that I think about it, it's probably actually better to save it for the end. For one thing, you'll have more support during this step. Uh, the bumps will be more robust, so it'll be more stable when you're lining them up. And second, by sanding them when they are finally assembled, it'll just decrease the chance of having them unevenly sanded and having a bump in the middle. So going forward, I'll probably do it this way, although it was a mistake on this puzzle. All right, so all of the pieces are assembled and dremeled, and I wiped some of the fog from the glue off of these pieces, but the rest will wear off over time. So now I'm going to assemble the core, and as I'm assembling it, I'm going to lube it using XMT10. There's nothing really special about this lube setup, but I found that it works pretty well. So I lube two of the edges on each axis and the other two sides of the ball. So I'll start, I suppose, with blue-white, and I will lube the edges on this one. So a little bit here, and then a little bit on this flat surface and this side as well. And then same thing for this one, except I don't need to lube the flat side since it'll just contact this one. And then for the other two sides on this axis, I just put a little bit down in here. Okay, midges are all in place and it's time to do corners. So corners are sort of like pyraminx tips where they don't interact with each other, so I do lube all of them. I just put a little bit on the circle and then a little bit on all three of the prongs. And then just for stability, I start inserting the wings as I lube the corners. The puzzle is now fully assembled, and I wiped it off, but I'll need to do this several more times. As for tensions, if you're using calipers, uh, after zeroing on the table, the calipers go 13.9 millimeters deep into the puzzle, measured like this to the screw. So that's slightly off, but considering how I'm holding it, 13.9 is about right. So that's how I'm going to be tensioning this one, but if you're not using calipers, it looks about like this. So. Fairly tight, but there's enough room for it to move around. The last thing to do before breaking it in and solving is lubing between the wings and the corners. So I just hold it like this and drop a little bit on this track in a few places around the puzzle. And then you can also just put some on this main surface. And after you're done with this, uh, to break in my last one, I just sat down and did scrambles on it for like 30 minutes, and that seemed to work pretty well. It's still not fully broken in, but that was a good starting point. So I believe that is about it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and thanks for watching.